gigantic complex of foundries and workshops that can form the Imperial Gunnery School of Nome, the many pieces of artillery used by the Empire of Man are forged. The devastating effects of the war machines used in the fields of battle are known all across the lands of the Empire and beyond. It is known that the Elector Counts spend vast amounts of wealth to procure their armies with the best war machines that busy foundries can produce. In this episode, we will talk about one particular piece of artillery that has become, with proper time and many adjustments, an ideal war machine to be used against the vast hordes that constantly harass the mighty empire of man. Hellstorm rocket batteries are an elegant answer to an age-old problem. These war machines cannot miss if they hit just about everything. Their munitions screeching like banshees towards the rough direction of their target, leaving a trail of sparks and smoke behind, and charred bodies at their destination. The Hellstorm rocket batteries are often devastating, using black powder to propel a roughly one meter long arrow-like projectile to great distances, exploding at its target. These rockets are mounted on handcart-like wooden brass launch pads, containing nine wrought iron or steel cylinders, upon which the rockets are loaded. The wrought iron is extremely hard and is able to bear the explosions, but it is also very brittle so when it fails, it shatters like glass and fragments fly everywhere, making for a very dangerous scenario for everyone nearby. The launch mechanism generates a tremendous amount of force, and it is wildly unreliable and unpredictable, often being crewed by the most experienced of engineers and operators, who even then still have to count on a bit of luck to hit their intended targets and on Sigmar's will not to commit any friendly fire. To further increase the war machine's accuracy, a number of modifications and improvements were designed over time and included into the rocket battery. These modifications included the addition of fins, long sticks added to the base of the rockets, and a launch carriage to improve aiming. At the end, these adjustments helped but the war machine is still far from being called an accurate weapon and is always prone to jams, malfunctioning, and misfires. When working correctly, however, the Hellstorm can saturate an immense area with deadly explosions, denying any ground to the enemy and bringing swift death to any who would dare cross their firing line. The unpredictable Hellstorm rocket battery was allegedly inspired by a particularly awesome fireworks show by a Cathayan emissary in Altdorf. After watching the spectacle, master engineer Hermann Falkstein had the idea to adapt the Eastern technology into something useful in the many fields of battle, the Empire waged war. His early prototypes infamously blew up multiple floors and laboratories in the Imperial School of Engineering. But the engineer persevered and would never give up on his creation until something usable by the Empire of Man came out of it. After a plethora of trials and errors, the rocket battery was born, winning its name when used in the battlefield by the legendary Electric Count Boris Todbringer who got extremely close to being hit by one errant rocket. The name Hellstorm, sticking to it after the colorful menagerie of insults spat by Toddbringer at the unfortunate crewmen. Many master engineers of the Empire can be found tinkering and experimenting within the Imperial Gunnery School and Null, and they constantly improve upon the internal designs and usages of the vast range of artillery at the Emperor's disposal. Day by day, they strive to perfect the art of war with the use of these deadly war machines. Unlike the great cannons and hell blaster volley guns often used by the forces of the Empire of Man, 
The Hellstorm's usage of relatively light ammunition, when compared to the metal balls used by the previously mentioned guns, made it not only cheaper to produce, but substantially lighter and thus more mobile. An extremely important trait for a war machine, so reliant on good positioning. A barrage of well-placed missiles often result in devastating ground-shaking explosions that blow apart entire regiments of unlucky adversaries. These war machines are intended to be used against massive blocks of infantry, far from any friendly units to avoid friendly casualties. It is common knowledge and widely recommended that if the target is within a rough 25-yard radius, then under no circumstances should it actually be fired, for the risk for friendly fire is just too great. When the enemy units engage in close combat, it is a well-known tactic for a master engineer to direct the artillery's fire towards the rearmost flanks of the enemy to compensate for the lack of accuracy and make sure that most of the shots either hit the enemy's ranks or go harmlessly past, avoiding damaging any nearby friendly units. In addition, and although not meant strictly for this role, there is some serious moral damage inflicted upon the enemy by the shrieking sounds of rockets cutting the air and their explosions blackening the ground. A specific example of the many uses these war machines can have through ingenious adaptations would be the Sun Maker, a set of Hellstorm rocket batteries particularly modified to wear out the regeneration effects of the undead of Sylvania with high explosive and armor piercing rounds. As the many skilled engineers continue to perfect and modify this deadly yet unpredictable war machine for its uses in the field of battle, the Hellstorm rocket battery will continue to wreak havoc amongst the enemies of mankind. Three things make the Empire great. Faith, steel, and gunpowder. Hello my friends, it's Shoyer here. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed that first segment of the video. In the second part, I want to give you an insight on what goes on behind the scenes when making these episodes, who are the ones involved in the project and how it all started. The whole project started as a way for me to practice my video editing and storytelling skills as I was looking forward to land a job in any of those areas. You see, I got introduced to Warhammer back in 2006 when I stumbled upon a Games Workshop store while I was living in Montreal, Canada. I was instantly drawn in by the beauty of the minis on display, the lore, the community surrounding it and the hobby as a whole. A few months later, I got back here to my home country El Salvador but I always kept in touch with the Warhammer universe through the books, uh, magazines, their website and whatnot. On the other hand, the Total War series had always been one of my favorite games. In fact, they were the reason I wanted to get myself a gaming PC in the first place. So when Total War Warhammer was announced, I was very very excited, and for me it was like a match made in heaven. I still remember admiring the Warhammer Fantasy minis on display back in the Games Workshop stores, and I never thought that the same minis I was looking at at that moment would then be recreated in such a beautiful way a few years later. Uh, so needless to say, I was super happy to see a Total War game based on, in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. I have always loved the idea of creating content and when I realized the storytelling potential that Warhammer and the Total War video game offered, I started making these cinematic videos on YouTube. And a few months later, I realized that I was really enjoying making these videos while some of you guys were starting to give me uh, very positive feedback and helpful guidance on how to improve for the next episode and that's basically what I've been doing ever since. I feel that I still have a long way to go and there are many things I need to learn and improve and the way I see it, it's a never-ending journey of constantly trying to create the best content possible. 
as you may have noticed by now, English is not my first language. In fact, I speak Spanish as a primary language, so when I was creating the channel, one of the first decisions I had to take was either to make the channel in English or in Spanish. I remember I thought about it for a few days, but at the end I chose to go with English because on one hand I knew I was going to be able to reach more people, and on the other hand it was a way for me to practice my own English and try to improve myself in that aspect. Now, with that being said, I knew that if I voiced the episodes myself, they would suffer greatly when it comes to overall quality. So almost right away, I knew that I would need the help of a proper voice actor to bring all these episodes to life if I wanted to make them with the best quality possible, and thankfully, we have Scrubasaurus for that, our main voice actor. And that takes me to the next point. Since I started the channel two years ago, I have always been doing almost everything by myself, except for the voice acting. Currently, Scrobosaurus is the main voice actor for the channel, and I'm more than happy to be able to work with him. He is a very positive guy who enjoys what he does, and is always looking to improve himself in his craft. Scrobosaurus is currently studying and practicing to become a professional voice actor, and I feel he is on the right track. He has voiced the majority of the episodes for this channel, and we haven't stopped working together since we first established contact. So honestly, I feel lucky to be able to work with this amazing guy, and the fact that he loves the world of Warhammer as much as all of us makes it better. I feel he deserves all the credits in the world for the hard work he puts in. If you have any words or any constructive criticism for him, let us know in the comments. Also, on occasion, I'm lucky enough to be able to count with the help of Jack or Yakamos, who give me a hand in the research and writing of some of the scripts, often in the long episodes. When that's the case, I always try to add their names in the credits in the video description. So, even if it's for some of the videos, they too deserve the credits for their help is valuable. On another note, I'm happy to announce that a video editor will be joining our ranks soon. So, I've been in talks with a video editor from my home country and we have been laying the foundations for the workflow process and setting the base upon which we will be working and collaborating. In fact, he helped me in the making of the first segment of this video, so we are starting to get around some of the small details and we'll see what we can improve as time goes by. I think this will help with the release schedule of the channel's content. Lately, we have seen an overall increase in the length of the episodes, but at the cost of less frequent releases, as these videos tend to take a lot of time to make. It must be said that all these plans are possible thanks to the support of our Patreons who sponsor the channel and all the YouTube subscribers who watch and enjoy the content. I'm really grateful for your amazing support and thanks to you we have been able to commission new custom artwork for the channel for certain episodes, uh, we get to pay for the music we use in the videos, Scrobosaurus also gets paid for his hard work in each and every episode, and we cover some other expenses like the web hosting for the blog, the occasional help with the scripts and so on. Now, with all that being said, I'll leave you with a short audio clip of Scrobosaurus trying to work around some voice lines for a recently released escaping video. Brutally efficient and absolutely without mercy, Snitch makes quick. Snitch makes quick work with those. <clears throat> Snitch makes. S Snitch makes fucking kill me. Snitch makes. <laughs> Snix makes me want to fucking die. Snix <clears throat> makes quick work of those he is dispatched to remove. What? Okay. Snix makes quick work of those he is dispatched to remove with his weeping blades. Even. Even carrying one by his. Even carrying one with his whip like tail, and only ever leaves the right clues in his wake. On this channel, we are putting together narrative Total War cinematic battles and Warhammer lore videos. A special thank you goes to our Patreon supporters who help us in the making of more content. You can also join Patreon and earn extra perks while supporting the videos to come. Find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.